Angry Old Hoops fan here, and today I am going to prove, I repeat, prove that the refs screwed the Bulls on two blocking calls in favor of LeBron James. Meaning that LeBron James was involved on both of these calls, and LeBron James committed a blocking foul both times. The first time, LeBron James got away with a block. In other words, this was a no call. I guess we're supposed to be thankful for that at this point when they at least put a little lube on before they rape you. And then there is the full LeBron James officiating rape. When LeBron James commits the foul and the foul gets called against the other team, such as this case. And this is when it's really hard to get back into the game. These are the difference makers. This is when you kind of start to give up hope because the refs just aren't going to let you fight back. I know blocks and charges are highly debated and get a little bit confusing. Therefore, I went to NBA official to get some examples of what they have decided are good examples. At least they decided they were good enough to post them on their own website for us to go and review. So this is what it looks like when you commit an illegal blocking foul. Even though LeBron James is not in the restricted zone, he moves into the path of the offensive player. Both plays involved Jones Jr. The first time was a no call. This time they actually called it against Jones Jr. A defensive player is permitted to establish a legal guarding position in the path of a dribbler regardless of his speed and distance. So the key word here is legal guarding position because it's no longer legal if you move into the path of an offensive player already en route. A defensive player is not permitted to move into the path of an offensive player once he has started his upward motion to attempt a field goal or pass. Furthermore, a defensive player must allow a moving player the opportunity to avoid contact when the offensive player receives a pass outside the lower defensive box. So now maybe you're wondering what is the lower defensive box? The lower defensive box is the area between the three foot posted up marks, the bottom tip of the circle and the end line. I think the most pertinent line here for these examples is allowing the offensive player the opportunity to avoid contact. Once you've picked up the ball as a part of your layup and are taking your steps, the only way to avoid someone who moves in front of you is to travel at that point. In both cases with Jones Jr., he has already begun his steps as part of the layup process. A defensive player must allow an airborne player the opportunity to land and then avoid contact when the offensive player is outside the lower defensive box. So I have drawn a line here to show the border of that lower defensive box so that you can see where it is in relation to the diagram that the NBA provides. But personally, I don't like that it had to get this complicated to explain this. The bottom line is that you have moved into the path of the offensive player. You were not established prior to the offensive player making his move to the hoop. A question to ask yourself here is how can the offensive player who has already started his two steps avoid contact with that defensive player who has moved in front of him? He can't, therefore it's illegal. Allow me to repeat a key line. The defensive player must allow a moving player the opportunity to avoid contact. But again, when it's writing, people can argue their interpretation. And that's why I am going by the videos primarily. The videos show you what the officials have decided after conferring with each other was the correct call. The text underneath this example with Lillard says that the call was overturned after they reviewed it and realized that he had moved into the path of the offensive player. 
This means that they officially reviewed the play and decided that that was an illegal defensive play. Not only that, but the NBA thought this was a good enough example to post on their website. The next example involves LeBron James. The text under this video says that the crew communicated with the replay center and determined the foul committed by the Lakers LeBron James was a blocking foul. Of course, LeBron threw a tantrum that should have gotten him a tee but didn't. And this was in fact a blocking foul, or at least it's a blocking foul as determined by the NBA to the extent that they think it is an example to post on their website. My closing argument is that if the NBA, after careful review, decided that this motion by LeBron James was an illegal blocking foul, how is that different than this? Or this? So if that's not a blocking foul, and the NBA is telling you that it is on their website, then I don't know what else to say.